of course, a large percentage of the acting profession look down on it, but, you know, I find it very reassuring at this time of year when work is scarce to have a good, dependable income. <laughs> I can't really remember what happened. There was the explosion and... Then, then a lot of shouting, and I think I might have been unconscious for quite some while because night had fallen by the time I came to, and when I did wake up, I saw that my hand had... Well, it, 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 was, it was gone. <laughs> I was one of the lucky ones. It wasn't I, Jono? <laughs> Some more scratchings. <laughs> here, here, Les, Les I, I, I must tell you this. I tried that Viagra last weekend. <laughs> Viagra? <laughs> well, the wife's been on at me. Uh, apparently, her sister's husband took it about a month or so ago. And she said to beat it, she said, you just wouldn't credit the size of... Howard's end? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, eh, hey, I could do with some of that. I mean, I'm not a young man anymore, but I'm still a man, you know, if you know what I mean. And between you and me... I'm still looking for adventures in the bush. Too right. But... To, to be frank, no, I, I do need a bit of a helping hand these days. So I go to the doctor, and he gets me to drop me trousers, and he takes a good look at my... Dickinson Longfellow? I, I should be so lucky. Uh, anyway, he gives me these pills. One a night. So I thought, well, best be on the safe side. I'll take six. Uh, well, two hours later... Well, a poof, straight to attention. Oh, I could barely walk. So I'm still in the bathroom and I'm thinking to myself... Where can I get another trollop? And I suddenly remember that Beatrice sat upstairs in her nightdress, so let's not waste it. I mean, maybe tonight's the night we, you know, stoke up the boiler again. And even if she doesn't go all the way, as long as I get... Oh, it works. Then everybody's happy. So in a walk, start naked, and she turns to me and she says... Try and keep it down, Stan. Some people are trying to read. Yeah. How do you know that? <laughs> how, uh, how are things at the arcade, Michael? Harold, did you not hear? The guy who runs a snack bar died last night. Who? Big Pete? tragic accident. Went up in a ball of flames. Ball of flames? Ball of flames. There was nothing left of him. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, I was chatting away to him, you know, just last week. Tragic. His wife is devastated. <laughs> <laughs> I hope his customers like the sausages well done. <laughs> <laughs> Something for the weekend, Michael? Yes. A barbecue. <laughs> so glad you could come. Let me introduce you to some people. Stanley, I'd like you to meet my wife, Helen. Humphrey, you never told me you had such a ravishing... Young wife. Oh, you old rascal. Helen, my dear, would you mind looking after this old rogue while I attend to our other guests? It's been a long time, Stanley. Forty-two years. You said you'd write to me every day. I waited and waited, but nothing ever came. Oh, Helen. Nothing's ever that simple. When I left, I thought you were the most beautiful girl in the world. I intended to write to you every day. But I was young. 
And being stationed in Paris among the prostitutes, I got sidetracked and forgot all about you. Anyway, it's lovely to see you. Oh, by the way, did you keep the baby? <laughs> now, I, uh, I promised I'd bring a nude model for you to draw this week. And my very own daughter, Pamela, has kindly volunteered. So I don't want any sniggering. And remember that she's doing this out of kindness to help all of you. Now, at the risk of sounding boastful, my daughter's a very beautiful young girl. So you have a, a rare opportunity to draw the female form at its most aesthetically pleasing. I'll just go and fetch her. My daddy's just away to see the headmaster, so you can start drawing my beautiful body now. I'm the girl, she's lollipop, it's a country. 